what to wear at Disney Parks extreme heat days. I am back from my family vacation to the excruciating heat of August. Yes, I did not know better and boy do I have tips for you. This video is not about how to spend your day in Disney Parks, but instead what to wear and what not to wear to endure the marathon of extreme heat throughout the blissful vacation days with children in 95 degrees so you can walk away without a heat stroke, a sunburn, or blisters. You see, normally after I take a trip, I come back with lovely pictures of complete strangers on the street with popular items that I see women wear on repeat. This time, I was looking high and low. There was nothing. My own outfits were mostly disastrous. I don't know what I was thinking, quite frankly. Fashion moments? No. There is nothing stylish available in this video. And if you think that you can look good while walking in a sauna the entire day, you're wrong. How wrong? Well, I'm gonna share a glimpse of my fashion mistakes, of course, so that we can all learn and not repeat torturous, torturous sunny days. I also want to show you some popular fashion trends that I've seen throughout the five days I spent in Orlando's Disney World. I want to quickly describe the conditions here. We're talking about 90 to 98 degrees Fahrenheit, 99% humidity, and approximately 15 to 25,000 steps a day. It's like walking and standing from 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. in a sauna for days. So I'm going to start with sunblock heavy, heavy sunblock of SPF 50 plus, 70 or 100 if you can, smother yourself head to toe before you put on any clothes. The sun rays penetrate fabric as well. For the face, I discovered this anti-aging sunblock with hyaluronic acid. It's SPF 50. It doesn't make me tear and absorbs very well. I'm a big fan of the Eucerin brand. In addition, I use the Bare Minerals Moisturizer, which has SPF 50 as well. It's tinted. But wait, there's more. I also borrowed my daughter's kids SPF 50 stick from Neutrogena and reapplied it on my cleavage several times throughout the day. Now the sun in the tropics in one of the hottest months of the year is no joke. Protect yourself at all times. And now lastly for my head, I use this sun hat which has SPF 50 as well and it was glued to my head. Safe to say I did not step out into the sun without it. Starting from the bottom up, what to wear on feet. Comfort is the number one goal here at all times. I recommend your best running shoes, walking shoes that will take you for miles without giving you a hint of a blister. Your feet will sweat badly and you want a pair that is airy and breathable with extreme support arch support and heel support. I bought my New Balance for like $30 years ago and they're probably the only shoes that I could wear from morning to night without any pain. So I thought, you see what I learned the hard way is that light and breathable is not enough. It has nice arch support, but my heels were killing me. There are hours of standing involved and from what I've seen, women were wearing mostly sneakers, the light sock type on top, but unlike mine, the majority had thicker sole and even thicker heel sole. I've since searched online and here's a good example from New Balance. Next are the socks. I wore bamboo socks exclusively. Now if you watch my video on how to avoid chaff skin, you know that bamboo is the best moisture wicking and breathable material to wear especially when sweating. Highly recommend these socks. I also wore them in nude shades, white and black because they match my sneakers. I know, not the best summer look. I need to get myself a lighter shade of sneakers, not just black. <laughs> now let's talk about bottoms. What to avoid? Long skirts like I did. And my goodness, I had no idea what I was thinking. I wanted to still feel fashionable and not dress like I'm running for a race, but it ended up backfiring. I was so hot and sweaty and 
uncomfortable. So let me tell you two things to watch out for. First of all, you will sweat like there's no tomorrow and there's nothing you can do to stop it. So wear clothes that hide it well and that are breathable. What clothes hide it well, you ask? Light colors and clothes that are not stuck to your body. I recommend looser linen pants in a light color if possible. Now, if you don't own a pair, invest in one. I most definitely need to. Second is you will drink a lot and pee a lot. So on average, you'll probably use the restroom at least once an hour. Thus, you need to wear bottoms that are easy to take off and put back on. No fancy belts, buttons, strings, or layers. The one thing that saved me from this entire skirt situation was that I wore my bamboo shorts on top of the undies. Okay, so let's back it up a little bit. I purposely wore only dresses and skirts to have better airflow. My mistake was the material and the length of them. Now they were either too thick or too long simply because I wanted to take the opportunity and use up my summer skirts. Now instead of thinking about how breathable they are and liftable, yes, the longer ones were a pain to manage in the restroom. But here are what I think are the three must-haves on the bottom. A panty liner, yes, you want to absorb that sweat and you want to stay as dry as possible and bring extra with you. The bamboo shorts that I mentioned and a breathable linen skirt if possible. Don't forget the anti-chaffing bar. It has saved me as I applied it every single day. Now, if you wear linen shorts, then you could forgo the bamboo shorts, but for me, they were helpful because they absorbed the moisture and dried ultra fast. Moving on from the pelvic area, let's talk about tops. I love dresses, especially the thin ones with shorts under for park days. Now, make sure it's not too thick. Try linen again what not to wear or block solid colors. I did this mistake and while it was matching the skirt and made me feel flattering, you know what was showing? The sweat under the bra. Ladies, you probably are not even aware of this because from the top view, it's not visible to us in the mirror and it's most likely scrunched up under the bust area. Now, do you know how I noticed? <laughs> Certainly not on myself. Oh no, it was an other woman walking towards me. Ouch. Yes, and the same thing happened to me. Now, did I regret the choice in the top I wore? Yes. But now I know to pick lighter shades of white, preferably, and in an airy material. Make sure it doesn't hug the body as it will absorb and show so much more. One very important element that I have to point out is that the coverage matters and it's counterintuitive intuitive. Yes, it's a hundred degrees and yes, you're hot, but this is not the time to wear a strapless or thin spaghetti strap or tank top. No, no, no. Cover those shoulders, top of the neck and cleavage as much as possible. The positioning of the sun from the top means that your face, shoulders and arms will burn faster than the torso and legs. Pick at minimum t-shirt length coverage for the arms if if not all the way till the elbows and cover that back. The cleavage is also the place where you will sunburn fast because that's the part of your skin exposed the most frequently under any type of clothing, right? So I did this mistake as well because, well, I ordered a nice and cute matching shirt to wear with my husband weeks before the trip and I didn't actually unpack it and wash it till the day before the trip. And yes, even worse, I didn't try it on till I was on the trip. So long story short, it had a v-neck shape which exposed my collarbone. I very rarely wear v-necks and this was not the time for extra exposure. I used as much sunblock as I could, the SPF 50 in the morning, then the bar during the day three to four times, different times.
times. I had the hat on the entire time, which provided some coverage as well, and still I managed to get a tan. If you wear v-necks every single day, can you imagine how much exposure is your neckline facing against the sun? It sort of looks bad when you're wearing different shapes on top, doesn't it? And it's so unhealthy. I mean, we just need to be mindful to protect ourselves. Now, I also visited a water park and well, all bets are off here because if you thought the parks are bad, the water exposure is even worse. You see, I live in Florida, but when you live there, you are in and out of the car, AC, stores. Beach time is usually before 9 a.m. and after 4 p.m. So you are considering the elements. Let me emphasize this again. A theme park is a different ball game. A water park is game over. I applied and reapplied sunblock on my face and my kids' faces several times throughout the day. The only thing that saved our backs compared to the rest of our bodies was the SPF shirt. Buy SPF 50 or higher and do not take it off. There are one-piece bathing suits that already have it included. Think those gymnastic onesies? This is what I used to wear before moving out of Florida, at the pool or beach or wherever I was going out. Now, if you don't want the one-piece bathing suit with the sleeves, get just the shirt and throw it on on top of your normal bathing suit. I wish I wore this every single day to the parks. Some people do actually wear this. I saw plenty of examples. The SPF hats are also popular with extra tail in the back to cover the neck. Now, let's move on to popular items I saw people wear in Disney World. The one-piece tank top onesie. Now, some were nude, some colorful, but always monochromatic. I was surprised because, first of all, to wear a piece of clothing that molds around your body like a second skin, you really need to be in shape. <laughs> I'm sorry, but not everyone has zero fat. I don't either. I'm glad I saw the younger crowd wear this. The material looked thick, which was probably hot to walk in. The straps did not provide a lot of coverage, and I can only imagine how annoying bathroom breaks were. It means you have to take it off fully to be able to relieve yourself. <laughs> Sorry, not very practical, is it? Now, the next popular item was the Disney Mini Backpack. They have a multitude of shades and character customization. It looked very well made, and I was seriously considering getting one. Not for me, because I already have my leather mini backpack. I've been wearing it for years, but for my kids. And then I saw the price tag. They range from $80 to $180. The limited edition ones are pricier. Now, luckily, I figured out pretty fast that was something that I wanted for them and not what they wanted. So we skipped buying it altogether. Still very cute though. Next are the fanny packs. These were also pretty popular, easy to access, and minimal baggage. A win for me. I don't have one, but I can totally see the practicality of it. The Mickey ears. These are the headbands that were very popular popular and I would say they're the number one fashion statement that women and girls opted to showcase their personality. They come in many, many colors, characters, and designs. It's a cute way to showcase your favorite movie or character. I didn't get any because while they are cute to walk around with in the parks, outside this world, they would look out of place, I think. The popular Disney shirts. I've seen entire families wear the same color and style t-shirt. You can buy them at the park. They start at approximately, I think, $26 a piece. I've also seen customizable ones on Etsy if you want to get them done ahead of time. But the cheaper option if you want matching shirts is to go to the local Walmart store in Orlando. They have an entire aisle dedicated to Disney where you will find Disney-themed clothing and accessories for half the price. I've been to Orlando many times and this was my first time in an actual Walmart store there. I didn't even know they have this many options. So overall, my opinion of my own 
outfits is that this trip was a good reality check that my wardrobe is not equipped for extreme heat weather other than the SPF shirts. I will seriously reconsider the materials, colors, and shapes to invest in for future trips. I hope you enjoyed my lessons on what to wear and what not to wear in extreme heat weather. For more travel related videos, I have an entire playlist. I'll see you there next.